Okay. Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today I'm at St Margaret's Churchyard, which is just a little bit um, to the west of Southampton, shall we say. Um, country road, take me home. No, I'm just not singing. <laughs> just a nice little place out in the country, as Blur once sung. And we are here today to see the final resting place of Florence Nightingale. So I will tell you a little bit more about her real soon. Uh, don't forget if you like the video today usual stuff and if you can leave your comments down below always important um, just for me to have a read as well just see what you guys think and uh, yeah we'll get on with it shall we Florence Nightingale was born on the 12th of May 1820 in a well into a wealthy and well-connected British family at the Villa Columbia in Florence Tuscany Italy and was named after the city of her birth Florence's older sister Frances had similarly been named after her place of birth Partenfolk, a Greek settlement now part of the city of Naples. The family moved back to England in 1821, with Nightingale being brought up in the family's home at Embleby, Hampshire, and Lee Hurst, Derbyshire. Florence inherited a liberal humanitarian outlook from both sides of her family. Her parents were William Edward Nightingale, born William Edward Shaw, 1794 to 1874, and Frances Nightingale, 1788 to 1880. In 1838, her father took the family on a tour of Europe where she was introduced to the English-born Parisian hostess, Mary Clark, with whom Florence bonded. She recorded that Clarkey was a stimulating hostess who did not care for her appearance and her ideas and did not always agree with those of her guests. She was incapable of boring anyone. Her behaviour was said to be exasperating and eccentric and she had little respect for upper-class British women whom she regarded generally as inconsequential. She said that if given the choice between being a woman or a galley slave, then she would choose the freedom of the galleys. She generally rejected female company and spent her time with male intellectuals. Clark made an exception, however, in the case of Nightingale, particularly Florence. She and Florence were to remain close friends for 40 years, despite the 27 year age difference. Nightingale underwent the first of several experiences that she believed were caused from God in February 1837, while at Embley Park, promoting a strong desire to devote her life to the service of others. In her youth, she was respectful of her family's opposition to her working as a nurse, only announcing her decision to the entire field in 1844. Despite the anger and distress of her mother and sister, she rejected the expected role of a woman of status to become a wife and a mother. Nightingale worked hard to educate herself in the arts and science and nursing in the face of opposition from her family and the restrictive social code of the affluent young English woman. As a young woman, Nightingale was described as attractive, slender and graceful. While her demeanour was often severe, she was said to be very charming and to possess a radiant smile. Her most persistent suitor was the politician and poet Richard Monckton Miles, but after a nine-year courtship, she rejected him, convinced that marriage would interfere with her ability to follow her calling to nursing. Florence Nightingale's most famous contribution came during the Crimean War, which became her central focus when reports got back to Britain about the horrific conditions for the wounded at the military hospital. Britain and France entered the war against Russia on the side of the Ottoman Empire on the 21st of October 1854. She and the staff of 38 women, volunteer nurses including her head nurse Eliza Roberts and her aunt May Smith and 15 Catholic nuns mobilised by Henry Edward Manning were sent under the authorisation of Sidney Herbert, the Ottoman Empire. On the way, Nightingale was assisted in Paris by her friend Mary Clark. The volunteer nurses worked about 295 nautical miles, which was 339 miles away from the main British cramp camp across the Black Sea at Balaclava in the Crimea. During the Crimean War, Nightingale gained the nickname the Lady with the Lamp from a phrase in a report in the Times. She is a ministering angel without any exaggeration in these hospitals as her slender, 
Form glides quietly along each corridor. Each poor fellow's face softens with gratitude at the sight of her. When all the medical officers have retired for the night and the silence and darkness have settled down upon those miles of prostate sick, she may be observed alone with a little lamp in her hand, making her solitary rounds. Nightingale wrote notes on nursing. 1859, the book served as the cornerstone of the curriculum at the Nightingale School and other nursing schools. Though it was written specifically for the education of those nursing at home, Nightingale wrote everyday sanitary knowledge, or the knowledge of nursing. Or in other words, how to put the constitution in such a state as that it will have no disease, or that it can recover from disease, takes a higher place. It is recognised as the knowledge which everyone ought to have, distinct from medical knowledge which only the profession can have. Florence Nightingale died peacefully in her sleep in her room at 10 South Street, Mayfair, London, on the 13th of August, 1910, aged 90. The offer of burial in Westminster Abbey was declined by her relatives and she is buried in the churchyard of St Margaret's Church in East Wellow, Hampshire, near Embley Park, with a memorial with just her initials and dates of birth and death. She left a large body of work, including several hundred notes that were previously unpublished. A memorial monument to Nightingale was created in Cara Marble by Francis William Sargent in 1913 and placed in the closeteer of the Bellischia of Santa Croce in Florence, Italy. So there's all the information there on Florence Nightingale. Sorry if I mispronounce the ACS. <laughs> I can't even speak. So, what time is it? Oh, it's seven o'clock, it's not too early. I've been up early though, I've been driving. Uh, if I mispronounce any words, I can't even say that word, don't worry about it. It's too early in the morning. You know, you've got to let me off sometimes. Um, yeah, what an extraordinary lady, um, you know, and she's done so much and has such a great reputation in her field for what she did. And um, yeah, I think, I think everyone, um, you know, that benefits from having a nurse help them at any time in their life needs to pay gratitude to Florence Nightingale because she really did set the bar high and set the standards um, to which, you know, we all have the benefit and the luxury these days of being looked after by these wonderful people, wonderful nurses and doctors, of course, and everyone in the house service. Anyway. I think I found it. I can hardly miss it. Have a look, it's beautiful. It's amazing, that's massive. FN, born 12th of May, 1820, died 13th of August, 1910. In memory of Frances, part and hope, elder daughter of William Edward and Frances Nightingale, and second wife of the Right Honourable Sir Harry Verney, BT of Claydon House, Buckinghamshire, born at Naples, April the 9th, 1819, died at Claydon, May 12th, 1890, buried at Middle Claydon. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye Lord. And then round here, Florence is the only one that doesn't really have anything written on there. Devoted to the mother, sorry, devoted to the memory of our mother, Frances Nightingale. Wife of William Edward Nightingale, Esquire, died February 1st, 1880. God is love. John the fourth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then round here. William Edward Nightingale of Embley in this county and Lee Hurst Derbyshire died January the 5th, 1874 in his 80 year, 80th year. And in thy light shall we see light. But like I said at the start, Florence literally has FN, a date of birth and a date of death. So 
there we had the final resting place of Florence Nightingale and I've got to say a massive thank you Florence for your service towards our service men and women that were fighting in the war um, at that time and you know helping them and just put a smile on their face when you know it's really hitting the van and their, their most um, probably depressed mindset and feeling like absolute rubbish but that young lady bless her um, did so much for them and probably so much for all of us like I said earlier in terms of what the nursing field have done since so bless you Florence thank you very much So that was Florence Nightingale, bless her. Right. It's rude not to try the door handle, I suppose, isn't it? Have a little look. Oh, and there's a notice on the door. open all the time but it ain't oh well I did try not to be today but there you go anyway from St Margaret's Church this beautiful oh hang on there's a little thing a little bench here let me show you this wow this is cool Florence Nightingale 1820-1910 Crimean War St Thomas Hospital Nightingale School for merit. The seat commemorates the bicentenary of Florence Nightingale on 12th May 2020. It was funded by kind donations from Rosemary Jones, Willow Parish Council and the Royal County Hospital Nurses League. Here am I, Lord, send me. Wow. That's beautiful. I literally spotted that when I was over there, but I just thought it was something that, I thought it was a bench with some paint on it or something. I didn't really clock what it was, but that's a beautiful little thing. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> this is a real nice, peaceful, tranquil place. If you ever get the opportunity to come out here, um, like I say, it's just to the west of Southampton in Hampshire. And it's just lovely, birds singing, it's early morning. Not many people around. And on that note, we shall say goodbye. <laughs> Don't forget to leave me your comments down below as well, won't you? Um, and uh, yeah, I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy.